And now it's time for Chic Shit Only. Hi, everybody. It's me, Lauren Zima. Oh, testing out a new theme song this week. Um, what do you like better, the enthusiastic cry or the musical uh, dulcet tones that I just displayed? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for being here. Our guest this week is an absolute, just icon in the making of social media madness and deliciousness. His name is Rod. You may follow him on Instagram or TikTok. He is kind of the millennial maven of our times. He really captures the millennial mindset and translates the rest of the world for the millennials of today, which is helpful. You know, he's doing the work and we appreciate that, Rod. Um, so stay tuned for that. We talk about uh, TikTok. He explains some things to me. We talk about the workplace environment that we all live in. Thriving, surviving, let's be honest. And we discuss mental health, which Rod has very chicly opened up about on TikTok. Um, so we get into it all. That's coming up. But first, we have to get into what we've been getting into this week. And I'm just going to kick it right off. Take a sip of my tequila. Uh -huh. And to tell you that I love fall... But man, oh man, I don't love football. You know, it's that time of the year. And by that time, I mean, I, I think it's called fall football season. And it's left and right, up and down. It's on every night of the week. And it's not for me. And here's what I've been thinking about. I tried out sports when I was younger. My parents, comically, hats off to them, had me try, like, volleyball, tennis, skiing. They knew my hand-eye coordination wasn't great, so they didn't get too deep on a lot of it. Um, I failed miserably at them all, you know? Um, infamously, from what I remember, we always remember those super traumatic moments in our lives. I think I lost a volleyball tournament for my middle school. I was on the C team, and I feel like the tournament came down to us, and the ball came at me, and what did I do? I jumped out of the way, screaming. You know, so that's where I'm at, but I still tried these things. Here's what I don't get. Pretty much all kids probably try sports. Why don't all kids try theater? You know what I mean? Like I don't have a competitive bone in my body. I'm happy to lose. And that's part of the reason I was never good at sports because I don't care. I don't really want the winning and the losing. I mean, in theater, maybe you don't get a lead part, but you're going to get cast as an extra. You know, and you're going to have a moment on stage and you're not going to be done with the show and think, wow, we lost, you know? And if you don't have a great show, you think, well, we got a full weekend. We got a matinee tomorrow. We can hit that and redeem ourselves. And I think theater's so great for kids to figure out who they are, to confront things like stage fright and public speaking, to um, explore, uh, you know, their artistry. And, and yet we don't all try it. So I think not chic on that. That's what I've decided. Um, Chris and I have been meeting some new friends lately and they are so sweetly been doing things such as inviting us to play tennis with them. And again, I'm like, I like you guys. Let's grab a drink. I'm not going to grab a racket. It's not for me. I won't make it fun for you. I'll be horrible and I'll ruin the experience. And also let me throw it out there. Would you like to meet up later to workshop a scene? Probably not. You know, let's try it as adults. Why isn't that more of an interaction? Oh, the guys can all, all go play golf. Well, I don't know. Why don't we get together and write a little skit? Just an idea. Why isn't it more accepted? Not chic how much we prioritize sports over the arts and theater. I'm saying it now. Um, and, you know, Chris Harrison is very good about, um, we went to a TCU Football game, which I think was the first college football game I've been to since college. And even then I didn't really go, you know, um, I will say TCU shout out to them, to the horned frogs. And this, I believe is the horned frog sign. If I'm doing it correctly. Um, everyone was so kind, so lovely, so much school spirit, a beautiful campus. I enjoyed myself. I also very much enjoyed myself because Chris Harrison knows how to get me through a sporting event. And that's to lead me right to a buffet and a bar, you know? And I don't, no qualms about that for me. I don't have any shame in saying that. I'm not paying attention to the game. I, as I'm sitting here, I'm not sure who won or lost. 
I think TCU lost, but that's, it doesn't matter to me. You know, we had fun with being with the people. That's what it's about. And I wasn't paying attention. I couldn't tell you to not look like a complete idiot. When everybody else stands up, I stand up. When everybody else cheers, I cheer. That's a fun tip. Sometimes what I like to do is have Chris tell me interesting things to say that make sense and then say them to the people around me and see if they realize that I have, I have anything like any awareness of what I'm talking about or if I'm just making it up. And that's me acting in the moment. You know, I bring theater to every minute. So I would say, try all those things. <laughs> just my tips on how to get through. But you know, what is beautiful about it is that we don't really make each other do like we never make each other do things that the other person isn't into. A huge cornerstone of our relationship is that we have a lot in common on things we like to do. We love to travel. We love to uh, dine out and experience new food together. We love uh, wine. Mm. Um, we're both in the same industry. So we have all of these, both from the Midwest, we have a lot of like cornerstones that are the same and a lot in common in our day-to-day -day lives. And, you know, Chris doesn't say, I need you to go play sports with me. And I don't say, I need you to go to Marshall's with me. You know, sometimes we try things out because it's good to always give it a try. And at the very least, it's funny. You know, I took Chris to Marshall's with me and he got a lot of comedy gold out of that. It's up on my Instagram. He couldn't believe how much time I spent in the candle aisle. And I would have spent longer if he wasn't there. I was trying to speed things up, which I regret. <laughs> so I asked you all for some questions. Send me in some questions to address this week on the pod, which I'm so happy that many of you did. Um, and I'm, I'm picking all relationship questions this week because our chic of the week and shit of the week, which are coming up, are celeb relationship related. First question coming in from Sarah. Sarah says, Lauren, my fiance and I are away from each other a lot due to our careers. We are both pretty independent so we know how to be on our own. However, I'm starting to see these long hours where my question is, how do you stay connected while you are away from your partner for a long time? And how do you balance or prioritize your relationship with your career goals? Great question, Sarah. I relate to this so much. Um, Chris and I have spent many, many weeks and weekends and all those things apart because we've traveled for work. I think first and foremost, we both really communicate about when it's reaching a breaking point. I will say to him, I need a date night. I need some time just you and me. We need a weekend just us. Because when you're traveling from work for work, then when you're back home, you're also trying to balance your friends and your family. And it it's a lot. So we really clearly communicate that to each other. Um, we're going to Napa together next weekend. Very excited. Chris's idea. He said, I think we need a weekend together. Thank you. I certainly won't complain. Again, curating an experience for me. Thank you. Um, and... When we are apart from each other, effort makes such a difference. And I know that sounds simple, but I will make sure if I'm going out of town, I leave him a little note before I go. And sometimes I'll like hide it in a drawer or something. So he just finds it. Um, we'll send each other random texts throughout the day, just saying, I'm thinking of you or something made me think of you. And when we do talk on the phone, we really try to make it a quality conversation as if we were together. Now we don't talk like, you know, we don't have those quality conversations every day. Sometimes it's a quick little check-in, but then I, I find, especially if you're away for long amounts of time, have like a 40 minute phone call together. And it kind of like reignites the flirting too. Um, I always try to look at our time apart as a time when like, maybe we can miss each other, which is nice. Um, but I get it. It's hard. And you really have to be with a partner who knows how valuable your career is to you, which it sounds like you all do, but then communicate to each other when those careers are starting to encroach too much on the relationship. And I think we can feel that because um, the people we love are always going to be the most important thing, aren't they? Unless they're people who ask us to sacrifice the things we love. That's another topic of discussion. Hope that helped, Sarah. Thank you for your question. Next up, we have next up a question from Lisa. I think I'm saying this right. Hi, Lauren. I met this guy on a dating app and we live in two different countries. On day one, we talked for hours. It was amazing. It was like that for two or three days. Then we were supposed to meet up again and he didn't answer my messages. I'm assuming she means meet up on the phone or FaceTime. And then, it, then finally, when I got a hold of him at the time for the call that we were supposed to meet, he missed and later responded he got busy and wanted to reschedule for next week. I'm not sure what to do here. Should I have sympathy for him because we're in different countries and this is hard and he's busy or should I end it? 
I think you should end it. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm not laughing. I'm just saying it's, I think you should end it. I do. I'm being blunt, but hey, that's what I'm here for sometimes. I think that we've heard on TikTok, if he wanted to, he would. And look, what you want, relationships are the easiest in the beginning, right? Typically, life's only going to throw more at you. It's just going to get harder. So in the beginning, you should really feel like the person is putting in that effort. Right now, all you had to do is get on the phone. You know, all you had to do is make a phone call. If you stay together, the tasks of life will be much, much larger. And if you can't get on the phone, uh, you, you delete his number. I really mean that. All right, next up, we have Vanessa. Vanessa says, oh, this is a simple one, but a strong one. Lauren, how can I learn to trust men after dating a cheater? <gasps> Vanessa, oh, been there, done that, babe. What I kind of always went back to is a reminder that the person cheating was not a reflection on me. It was their own issues. Um, it was not a an indicator that I was less than or not worthy or that I couldn't handle a, rela- a relationship. And also that was then, you know, and this is now. And by that, I simply mean we cannot hold the mistakes of another in our past against the person who we're trying to create the present with. Um, I really, really believe you got to leave that stuff at the door and it's not fully possible to do that, but then communicate it to the person you're with. Explain, look, I've got a little bit of a trust issue and here's why. You got to give in and trust. I know, you know, like if you, if you got in a car accident, would you be a little weary to drive? Yes. But would you think that that new car was definitely going to get you in an accident? No. People aren't cars, but you know what I'm saying. I get you though, and I feel you, and I know that that's not easy, but you can do it, and I have all the confidence in you. All right, everybody, a couple questions with you all. We're flying right through our to-dos here on Chic Shit Only today. Let me have another little sip of my tequila. Mm-hmm. Needing it after all of the sports activity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little segment we do here, chic of the week and shit of the week. These are both going to celeb relationship moments this week. My chic of the week, Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. You may all have seen the internet aflame a- a with their GQ joint profile where they said a lot of crap, a lot of interesting stuff about their relationship, um, including but not limited to Megan Fox saying that the relationship has euphoric highs. It is very intense, she says. Our souls chose this to absolutely have to face our shadow selves, to face things about ourselves we didn't want to have to know that we tried to push away. Machine Gun Kelly says, it should be light, but also we go to hell with each other. It's ecstasy and agony for sure. I don't want people to think anything's perfect with us. I didn't say it was the darkest fairy tale for no reason. (laughs) here's why I'm saying chic. These two are in it. You know, life is about experiences. And I got to say, they are so, I mean, they, they call each other their twin flames. They are lit. And I do wonder, can you sustain that fire? Is this long term? I don't know. But I love that they're experiencing it. I love that they're giving us all this extreme relationship to like, ponder and to look at our own relationships with, should your partner show you your shadow self? Is that a good thing? Either way, they're in it. And I love watching it and I say chic, but let me know in the comments below if you feel differently because it's an easy relationship to have a judgment on. Next up, shit of the week, Megan Trainer and her husband. They, I've interviewed her. She is lovely. What a sweetheart. But they revealed that they have two toilets and they had their... <laughs> They had their builder build two toilets right next to each other, seemingly in the same bathroom in their house. And and Megan said that they have uh, gone number two together. And so when I say shit of the week, this is quite literal. <laughs> and it's, it's going to be a no for me, babes. Like, I, I'd rather hang out in the Machine Gun Kelly, Megan Fox uh, flame. I'd rather be on fire than doing that with my significant other. I can't picture it. I don't want to do it. Would you? It's Megan says they just like to be together all the time. Sometimes you need some alone time. 
cheers to their love and their beautiful family. But I, I think we got to build a wall, you know, physically between the toilets. I think we got to redecorate, remodel. I am not the person who shares those things with my partner. I'm just not, because you know why? Because I don't want to know theirs. I'll be honest. Let me know if you disagree with me. All right. From chic of the week and shit of the week. (laughs) I've talked to you all a little bit about how much I love a phrase. Dorinda Medley certainly last week gave us some phrases to work with. It's still sticking with me how on episode two of the podcast, she talked about, you know, who comes to when you're up on the cross, as she said, who comes to help you and who comes to burn you. Wow. That stuck with me. I wanted to bring you all a phrase that my dear mother has started saying, and it is, um, it's shocking really, but somehow she's begun and she can't be stopped. And now I've started doing it. My mom uh, picks no bones. What's the phrase? Oh God, (laughs) talking about phrases. She will say anything and she is not shy about her opinions. And here's a new method that she's trying to justify them with. Drops a bomb, follows it up by saying, just saying, just saying. (laughs) Think about it and use it if you want to. And let me give you an example. Donna will say to me, I mean, we'll be shopping together. She'll say, that dress is hideous. Just saying, (laughs) I'll get my hair dyed. Not my favorite color on you. You've looked better. Just saying. (laughs) She'll completely shut down a person's whole person. He's an idiot. Just saying. (laughs) The power of it. It's like you can say anything and then completely eradicate it having any meaning, yet you've still put it out there. But you've said you're just saying. Just words. Just saying. It's a dangerous phrase to use, but try it out if you'd like, if you're feeling absolutely vicious. Oh, I, um, one of the things I talk with Rod about is the phrases that are coming back and things we want to bring back because Rod evaluates the trends of today for the TikTok generation. So we're going to get into all that. We're coming up with Rod after the break. Okay. Here he is our millennial king, our millennial with the most Rod, except your handles are all just me, Rod. Rod, I just realized I don't know your last name. Oh, it's still, (laughs) it's super boring. That's why I don't put it in there. Yeah. You're giving more of a Madonna, more of a share with just yeah. Rod. Yeah. Just just Rod. But now TikTok, my TikTok is only Rod. Is is just that's Rod. all you need. Just at Rod. Yeah. So king of TikTok, mm-hmm. absolute icon of millennial, the millennial madness that we're all living and thriving-ish mm-hmm. in, I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for being here. I started yeah. following you. Like, I feel like beginning of quarantine and you Mm -hmm. have so blown up since then in so many ways on Instagram and TikTok. But I wanted to have you on the pod because, um, you know, it's called chic shit only. And you do so many chic things in terms of TikToking, uh, identifying our millennial struggle, and then also Mm -hmm. talking about mental health, which you've done Mm -hmm. a lot. So I want to talk about all those things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been a crazy year. Like, a, my, I'm re- literally at my year anniversary right now. So I saw you posting wild. the other day, like, happy one year to me deciding to post about my job and hoping my boss wouldn't see it. <laughs> he, but he saw it. Tell I me about, remember I text. actually, Rod, I find that to be quite brave. Mm-hmm. I work at a very, I work for a very big brand mm-hmm. and I, I mean, it's, I, and I'm supposed to think constantly about how I'm representing myself mm-hmm. because that I'm also representing the brand. When you first started going on TikTok and talking about your work struggles, like that's, it was quite brave of you, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it was a fun thing to do because I I think, again, I don't think anyone was seeing my stuff. And I remember the one that I posted was talking about like crying at my corporate job or something like that. (laughs) Right. And that was the one that was like, before it was like talking like, oh, we're all working home in solidarity, you know, like whatever, which is fun, you know, like positive enlightening, but it was when I became self-deprecating that of course when I went viral, I'm like, okay. Um, but then, yeah, I just said, I, I remember typing that out and before I hit post, I go, okay, well, this is just risky, but let's do it. And then literally four hours later, my boss texted me, Hey, you saw this on my for you page. I was like, okay. The turnaround was that quick. 
well, cause that was like back when like you would go viral so quick, like there weren't as many people on the app, you know? So it was just like a little easier to go viral, but yeah, they saw it right away because it's, I don't know if you know this, but TikTok is, I didn't know about this at the time, but now it makes so much more sense that all my coworkers are seeing it. TikTok is all about, first of all, who's in your network. Cause you know how the internet works. It's just like, mm. it tracks everything. Um, and then locality too. So like Chicago saw my stuff first and yeah, every my coworkers are in Chicago. So so they yeah. were targeted with your content. Yeah. <laughs> they were literally like, oh, no one's going to see this. It's like literally, you no, know, the algorithm is built so they would see it. Yeah. <laughs> when you posted that first TikTok, because mm-hmm. I think we all want that freedom of, you know, it's this time everybody wants to be exactly who they are. Mm-hmm. Somebody, uh, actually my first guest on the pod, Sarah Shah, he said like, truly ha- true happiness is being exactly who you are. And that hit me so hard. So mm-hmm. you were posting this TikTok. You were going to say exactly how you felt about your job. Did you post it thinking, can I get fired for this? And were you scared? I did. I was scared. Um, and actually when I, when stuff started like kind of blowing up, I, I have a friend who works in HR, at the oh. company. <laughs> she <laughs> so was your insider. He was I, your insider. I, yeah, she was, no, she exact goes and then screenshot it and sent it to her. She goes, you literally, you don't talk about the company's name. You like, don't, you're not like bad mouthing the company. Like it's fine. You know? And did they so. come to embrace it? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I worked for a very entrepreneurial company at the time. A lot of actually what the content that people see is relative to a previous company that I had toxic experiences with. Oh. Um, it was just at the time I was talking about, you know, like we were all in this like work from home thing. And, but then I saw that a lot of people were started talking about their toxic work environments. I'm like, okay, well, I've been through this before, but all that to say, the company I was at at the time when I started posting TikToks are amazing. They're still great. We left with a pr- really, I left with a really good um, relationship, but even my, I remember there was one, like we call it stand up, you know, where it's like, everyone obviously it was on a zoom call but it's like a daily meeting that you have oh. um the entire company and it was a startup so it was like i was gonna people. say i don't know what that is but this is like some yeah. corporate yeah. jargon okay this is like yeah. a stand so, up hand, all yeah, hands your corporate God. people will understand all hands literally is a good word for it and this i just was like camera off like i'm like i'm not engaging in this this was literally it was the morning that shania twain followed me so i was still riding that high i'm like i could care i don't care about my job today like shania twain followed me <laughs> like, yeah whatever and then my boss ceo started playing one of my tiktoks and i was just like well <laughs> so i just like sat there so i of course had to turn my camera on because you know everyone's like looking for me and t- so i was literally just like and get this i had no idea i had something in my teeth how, how Jonas Brothers have you? That's like the perfect phrase. So I'm sitting there smiling like this and has something in my teeth. And um, he even said at the end, he goes, and Rod, who followed you today? And I was like, should I? It was just like, but he was great. So it was all that to say, it was very well received. But what have you learned about yourself, about your own path to success in this past year of going from, I'm working in this corporate job to I'm now followed by Shania Twain? <laughs> I think I've learned that nothing will surprise me anymore. You know, like, of course, I'm so humbled by every experience that I have. It's not like I'm like, oh, well, that's cool that this happened. Like, I still wake up every day and I'm like, this is such a cool experience that I'm living in. If this all ends tomorrow, I've been able to work with these charities that give back to mental health and reach these people, you know, and help people feel seen. But yeah, nothing surprises me. Like, even when I met in Sync of Backstreet Boys, like, it was like 13 year old me would have been freaking out. And I was like, this is cool. But like, I'm like, amazing. They're normal people. Like, it's just, again, nothing that happens anymore. Uh, I don't want to be like surprised or shocked. I want to be grateful. If that makes sense. I have kind of like a different. Yeah. Well, and I do think social media has made like, we all feel so close to celebrities. Like it's like, Mm -hmm. they could like your comment or they could whatever. Yeah. Um, But it's, it's, I mean, to get a follow. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That was big. It was probably her team. If I'm looking at it, like Shania Twain doesn't make TikToks. Her team does. But- Look, I've interviewed Shania. Yeah. yeah, I do think she has a team doing the socials, but, yeah. I th- but she's involved. You know, she knows yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Shania is very sure. savvy. Just look at it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's the funniest part about TikTok is like, I, I hope people know that like a lot of their celebrities want to be on TikTok, but also they like help 
get help with it, you know, um, yeah. just so that they can remain relevant and, and all of that. It's fun, fun to watch. Do you miss anything about the early quarantine days of TikTok? Cause I was, I was like thinking back to our past. What do you miss? Oh, you just said yes. <laughs> when every, all the trends were the same. And I, I do feel like people were nicer on the app. Like I was even scrolling today. You might see, I have a draft. You might see it in my mutuals later, but it was just like, I feel like people aren't as nice as they used to be on the app. Like I someone... think it's because more people have gotten on it. Actually, in the beginning yeah. of quarantine, I was like, I'm loving TikTok because it's the nice app and Instagram's mean. And now I yeah. think like more people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, people are like- The meanies have ready. found it. Well, do you know who Emily Mariko is? The, salmon, so she, rice. Salmon, salmon rice. Salmon rice bowl. Yeah. And she's- Ice cube. She's just a nice person. Like mm -hmm. we're friends now on the app. She sent me mayonnaise. Like it was great. We had a good moment. But people are so mean to her for no reason. And I'm just like, that's is, is it, I, it's almost just like, I don't know if we're deeper into quarantine, all that, all that to say, I do miss when like the app was a little bit nicer. I do miss like when everyone was doing the same trend, like the Dalgona coffee, um, the whipped coffee yeah. or whatever, or like the same trending sounds. Like I'll, sometimes I'll hear a trending sound from early quarantine and I'll be like, that's a Raven moment where I'll like, oh my God, like I just like. Like it was only a year ago, but I already feel the nostalgia of it. Like yeah, I miss exactly when Tiger King was what we were all watching yes. together. I miss when The Office was on yeah. um, Netflix and we were just all falling asleep to it every night. When everyone was trying to learn the savage dance. Okay. I'm glad you brought this up because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot, but I'm very yeah. confident in doing this because I know you're asked mm -hmm. to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you to explain some TikTok things to me. Perfect. Love this it. is literally a series you do. And I'm embarrassed that I don't know some of these things, but okay. part of I being chic is sharing your knowledge and your expertise and you crush this. Okay. Sure. When someone on TikTok says it, it feels like Thursday or they're like, mm -hmm. it feels like, like that, 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 that's like, Patrick is just like Wednesday. What does that mean? Do you know what that means? <laughs> I think what I would get from it, just like from knowing people on TikTok is that's the vibe. It's like, oh, like Thursday to the day before Friday. So there's like a little bit of excitement. It's just like one of those things you can't explain. Like, I think it was someone said like Sunday in the color brown. Yes. Have the same vibes. Yes. Yep. Yes, so yes, 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 like, yes. Yeah. I think that's what it's rel relative to. It's like, think about how you feel on a Thursday. That's what this also feels like. Okay. That is a really roundabout way of yeah. not using adjectives. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, that's so intense. <laughs> yep. Okay. You've mentioned this lately, the chair emoji. We're using mm. the chair emoji now mm. to say what? What does that mean? It's literally people, and I said this on a video, I'm like, millennials, because I do a lot of millennial content, right? Millennials want to know the backstory. They want an origin. They want like character development. And literally what happened is exactly this. A YouTuber got on TikTok and said, Hey, do you know what would be funny if we started using a chair emoji instead of a laughing emoji? People are like, yeah, that's funny. They started doing it. That's the chair emoji. It's it. Literally, it just means the literally le means the laughing emoji. There's no like, I, I put it, I put a little explainer, and people are like, no, it must mean that someone is like thinks something so funny they have to sit down in their chair. I'm like, literally, it does not mean no. like it's like we it's don't not need to that reach deep. For it. In fact, it's not at all deep. It, not at all deep, and people are so upset like millennials are like actually livid. They're like, we need more. I'm like, or you know, that meme of Adam driver where he goes, more. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. Like that's literally millennials on TikTok with anything. Okay. Rod. Yes. Keep educating us millennials. Yeah. Um, yeah. lately I'm seeing everybody's bringing a speaker to a door and mm -hmm. playing Kesha's die young and banging on the door. What's happening there? Why are we doing that? And also it's really funny because a lot of the, um, to be honest, white people can't, we can't hit that beat, beat right now. We can't go so off beat. Um, it is, so the song is, I think it's just playing the song, but then they're supposed to knock on the door at that time and the correct beat to get someone's attention. It was a TikTok trend a while ago. Um, that was pretty dark where it's like my seasonal depression, like coming up on um, fall, you know, and then it's like just knocking on the door. So something's knocking at the door. I'm embarrassed that I still don't know this. I've never looked it up. What does no printer mean? I haven't heard that one. Isn't it, don't people say like fax, no printer? Oh, it just literally, so have you heard facts? When people say, oh, facts. Yeah, but I, I okay. guess I assume that just means like, it's just facts. It's just in addition to that. It's just facts, no printer. It's just a funnier way to say facts. I can't. Okay, so facts <laughs> so is like- Why don't we have okay. a printer? What does no exactly. printer mean? Where's the printer? <laughs> it doesn't, that again, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. I think what we're finding out, Lauren, is that nothing means, everything means nothing. And um, what <laughs> symbolic phrase for where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, yep. Literally, quite literally. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay. Thank you for, thank you for addressing some of those things. Yeah. Um, 
I also want, you have been doing these incredible millennial recap videos mm -hmm. um, where, and go check them out, everybody, if you haven't, follow Rod on Instagram and on TikTok, and you recap what's going on uh, for us millennials and like a beautiful mm -hmm. sort of news bulletin report for us. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, since you kind of get into what trends are coming back from our time, what trend do you want to see come back? I... Oh man, I haven't been asked this question. Ooh. I would love to see, um, I feel like just with how Gen Z does other trends, I think they could actually get creative with this one is planking. I thought planking, you know, has a lot of potential. Yeah. Because planking. if someone tried, to, someone tried to bring back Carl and Shake and I go, no. I, I like, saw that. We don't have time. Like no one has time for that. Also but in the, like in the era of COVID, where are you going to get a group of people and like, Exactly. I'm like, I don't want to go buy a costume, you know, like, but I feel like planking, we could get creative, especially with TikTok now, like looking at like the opportunity to showcase your creativity with it. I, I would yes. like to see planking come back. I never participated. I would be an observer, but I would like to see it come back. We missed it. I didn't either. We missed it the first time. I'd like to yeah. circle back on it. You yeah, know, I'd like to bring it up in my it. inbox. <laughs> I was very alarmed, Rod, very alarmed to see that in one of your recent recaps you brought up, and I believe it was Kristen Stewart was yeah. on a red carpet wearing a dress over pants. Yeah, that was hard. That was a hard one for me to digest. And it's hard as because well. she's been looking great lately in other yeah. uh, promotions. And she still looks chic, for the you know, anime. like it, it, it looked, it looks good. But again, how trends happen is it doesn't look like that. You know, it looks more like how lover, but how Ashley Tisdale did look at, on the red carpet. You know, Ashley Tisdale the, wore that look know, more than anybody. She's in all the than videos anybody. calling it out. Yeah. Um, did you see the Miu Miu fashion show controversy? What? Oh my gosh. So Miu Miu's Paris fashion week, I believe it was, they are bringing back low rise mini skirts. No, like, right. like, no, no, no. Like dirty, like dirty Christina Aguilera, low rise mini skirts. Yep. I yep. Up in the head with the microphone. Yeah. That's that. I know. <laughs> it's, no. Okay. I have yeah. written in my notes. I have written in my notes. What trend needs to not come back? My answer mm. will be low rise. Anything. So low rise jeans already have been like I you know. see. I've been ignoring Bella it. Hadid. You know, like they're all like Emily Ratajkowski wearing them. But yep, the low rise mini skirt trend. So that's just that's just a strip of fabric, though. Right? Yeah, quite literally. Yep. Here, I'm gonna pull it up for you really quick right now because I have so it flagged. Insane. This is breaking news. Breaking I millennial know. news. Yeah, you can't use because you don't want to do it. Because you don't want to do it. Yep. Here we go. No, you see, yeah, it's so bad. Yep, yep. But it, all that is is exposing our our most vulnerable parts that we mm -hmm. don't feel as confident about. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is news you can booze. Take a drink mm -hmm. because it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Take a drink. I was thinking about. <laughs> we see a lot of trends coming back. I want, like, I want a phrase to be brought back, mm -hmm. and I'm not mm -hmm. sure what phrase it is yet. But there, there are so many new phrases I don't understand. I feel like we need to bring back a phrase from another time so that the younger generation today questions it. I think I'm just going to say what's on everyone's mind as they're listening at home is what's up. <laughs> Remember that? And what was it? That wasn't Mountain Dew, was it? It was a, was it a Bud Light commercial? Uh, it might've been Bud Light. Here, I'm going to look it up. What's up? What's up? Uh, yes. Budwe Budweiser. Budweiser. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for bringing, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think that one, that is pretty parallel to the Gen Z experience. Like, you know, like that one, it's easily, can will confuse them. Maybe we should do that. Let's start it now. Let's just be like the YouTuber with the chair and you and I are going to start saying it and like captioning our TikToks with that and just get them wondering what it means. Because oh the, 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 the gears are turning. The gears are turning. What's a trend you hope never comes back? I think just like the straight, so straight leg jeans are back, right? You know, to, yeah. people are cuffing them, you know, like getting creative, they're stylish, right? I, if I, I swear, if I see someone wearing a pair of leather flip-flops with them though, and like frayed at the bottom, you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, sure and, that's already happening. <laughs> I know. We just don't live it. Like I'm in LA or in Chicago. We don't live in the parts of the country where that's happening, but that's happening. Yeah. Maybe happening in Malibu. Well, it probably has never gone away in some places. Is what, yeah, I get all your shit. So <laughs> I didn't like that one. Or do you remember like the, I th this is probably still existing, existing too. Like Taylor Lautner, um, Joe Jonas had like the faux hawk where they didn't like have an, a full on mohawk, but they like spiked it 
in the Mohawk I don't fashion. Need spiky hair to come back. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm happier about the mullets return than I would be about spiky gelled hair. Every one of the people that tried to, people who weren't celebrities who had celebrity hairstylists, we just used too much gel where it became this like thin point. Right. And it just looked bad. Even no, to some people, like put themselves. it all up here where it was like a front alfalfa situation. Hope that yeah. never comes back. Okay. Helpful. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. it's, and as we talk about, you were just talking about how in the beginning, TikTok, things were easier um, to go viral. And then you mentioned the beautiful Emily and the salmon bowl, her mm-hmm. salmon, her leftovers dish that is forked up salmon, so good, though. rice with an ice cube, microwaved mm-hmm. and various sauces. Still she sent you that. the mayonnaise. Send me the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise is a game changer. Why did that blow up though? Like bring me your knowledge again. This is your chicness. Why does someone making people make tons of food on TikTok? Help yeah. me understand why just a salmon rice bowl became a trend. I think the ice is what made it. People wear <laughs> bath bowl. No, because you put this piece of ice in the microwave and it doesn't melt. I and actually looked this weird up. Science. It's like a wiggle technology. People. Yes, say. it was know. something yeah. about how the molecules are too hard and frozen in ice. The water molecules, so it won't yeah. melt because they're not With the parchment moving. paper. Yeah, yeah, it's not like coming up. Yeah, I, I read that too. So it was just that, the weirdness that is, of that. So people, and I think just her aesthetic, her kitchen, there's just a whole bunch of stuff. But what the algorithm does is it builds out off your newest followers, right? So people who really hone in on a niche will grow faster. So Emily Mariko, quite literally posting the same video in different variations every single day is going to cause her to go more viral because she's appeasing her latest audience, if that makes sense. Where me, if I'm focusing, I'm not like growing super fast right now, which I'm fine with. But for me, I'm focusing on millennial content. I'm focusing on work from home content focusing on a lot of different things, of course, I'm not going to grow as fast because I'm kind of all over the place. My followers are like, what is he doing? You know, where with her, you know, you go to Emily's page, you know what you're going to get. Okay. Yeah. So you really, I mean, you're very knowledgeable about how TikTok I, is working. I've worked. So I've worked in the corporate space, worked in sales for almost 10 years now. And I just, I, I've had to have an analyst hat on at all times that I feel like I'm pretty good at like looking at something and kind of recognizing or comparing as to why something's working, why something's not working. So every time you're making content, it's just your brain's kicking in and doing that. Which is bad because I overthink. And then like, well, <laughs> this isn't going to be funny. And like, that's not why I should, I mean, if I like it, I should put it up. You know what it resonates, resonates. I'm, I'm living a good, I'm living my best life. I'm having a good time. That's all that matters. If we know one thing about you, Rod, it's that you overthink. <laughs> it's that I overthink completely. <laughs> every day. Well, so you have opened up a lot about dealing with mental health, working on your mental health. And then you just wrote this article for WebMD mm-hmm. and which is so cool. I, you just yeah. lit up with that. Was that a cool moment? It was crazy. Yeah. Cause I'm like, Web, I'm like, I used to go on WebMD cause I overthink. And then I'm like, well, what disease do I have when I right. and literally we all have cancer sniffle. for WebMD. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Literally through WebMD. It's like, or could be this, and you're like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> or you're dead common, right now. Like, yeah. The common cold or you have an hour to live. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> um, but that, that was really cool. Cause I'm like, okay, that's like a legit source. And then, yeah, there was another one recently that I um, wrote an article on, which is something I've been thinking about for years that I just had never like had the opportunity to talk about was how millennials were like enticed with these like workspaces, the startup environment, you know, exposed brick pool tables. And then we get there and then the actual work experience is terrible, but we're working in this cool environment. So we, we will sacrifice how we feel because we get to take a cool picture in our office or something like that. So yeah. true. Yeah. It's yeah. like the Google yeah. environment of like you're yeah. playing ping pong and you're eating mm-hmm. great food, but although mm-hmm. I've heard Google actually was great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Same. It's, but, but that's why the people want to be Google, but then they don't, they don't have the, they would, they don't have the re- the money for both, you know, to right. give that experience and then the mental health resources. So yeah. when you are, writing an article for WebMD or talking about your own struggles and journey on your TikTok. What, what does that feel like for you? Because one thing I've thought about is social media probably is a little hard on all of our (laughs) mental health situations. And yet it's also a way to connect us and for us to relate to others and know we're not alone. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to convey with it? And and what's it like to get the feedback when you do open up about it? Yeah, I think I just want to convey that people aren't alone. You know, I think that's when you, we talked about like my video started going viral. Like, yeah, my boss might see it, but then the people who are also seeing it were commenting like, Oh my gosh, I'm not alone in this. I feel seen. I feel seen. My boss doesn't hate me, you know, like, or, you know, all these things. And I'm like, you know what? Like, that's, that's why I keep doing this. You know, it's 
first of all, kind of, I'll, I'll say the most random obscure thing and like, do other people relate to this? And then they do. I'm like, what? Um, so that's been, it's kind of been therapeutic for me as well, but I think just to make sure that people, I want to be everyone's coworker all the time, you know, just like, that's what I feel like. Even if someone recognizes me in public, seldom as it happens, like we talk like, like, Oh, Hey, it's Rod. It's not like, you know, I was with Anna Sitar in New York. Who's another TikTok creator. Who's amazing. We love her, but she was getting bombarded with people. Cause she's like Gen Z's like Emma Stone almost, you know, but then with me, people I'm like, Oh, like you follow me clearly you work in corporate America. Where do you work? You know, and we have that kind of more natural conversation. Um, as far as like when I get comments and stuff or people start, I get, I don't get that much hate, which has been really nice. Cause I think people probably are too scared too. Cause I already, you know, like talk enough about anxiety and all that, that they're like, mm-hmm. Oh, maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe it should be a little nice to him. Um, well, that's but, interesting though. Yeah, Cause yeah. it's like, maybe by talking about it, people mm-hmm. feel more, you're more humanized, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's, and again, the kind of the same thing is what I always want to be is being a, a human. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's a better way of saying it. It's just be, be the guy that people follow me to be. I love you being yeah. everyone's coworker. Yeah. I actually me was too. thinking what in my, as I said, when I missed the early days of quarantine, when the office mm-hmm. was on Netflix, I'm like, I, I think there's a, I want a, a new version of the office. Like I want a, an updated, like today's workplace version of the office as a show. So that's what I'm actually working on. I'm writing. I write now. That's like what I do. Um, and I've been working on this pilot for a while. So hopefully it gets picked up. And right. I have that. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of, cause I was never creative. I was never a creative person. Like mm. I was never like, I was, funny ish, like whatever. Like I, w- I would have a good time with my friends and all this, but I was never a writer. I was good at writing emails and that was about it. I felt like, but now I'm like actually writing a show and doing okay at it, I think. And then I'm like, this is again, that's where I, that's when I started to learn. It's like nothing sh- should surprise me, you know? Cause like you can do anything at any point in life. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited for that now. What a perfect next step for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, great. Wow. Yay. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. This, okay. this having you on was such wish fulfillment for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, what would you say to someone who is that person who's like sitting at their desk, truly living that life that you find a way to be lighthearted about, but there is some real struggle in it? Yeah. What do you say to them about their experience given that you a year into this have like totally changed your life. Like you just said, now you're working on a TV show. What, what hope would you give them or advice would you mm-hmm. give them? Yeah. I think like, if I, like, if I, if this all goes away, goes away tomorrow, like I know that I can, you know, step back into a, a similar role that I was just doing or whatever. So I don't ever want to say like, quit your corporate job, you know, whatever. Cause like, this is, this is America and we have an economy, you know, like, so you have to work in order to live. Sure, sure, sure. I do want to say that, like, just be open about, your mental health. Like that's the biggest thing I think I've been working through is like a lot of people like, Hey, my employer, I don't know if they want to hear from me when I need a mental health day. I'm like, well, have you asked them? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, well one ask them, but two, that employer at the same time, like when you're onboarding and new employees or when you're rolling up these mental health initiatives, make sure that you're fully communicating the benefits that you're offering your employees. Cause they want to be able to take advantage of them. Um, And two, there are people out there who will send me ideas. You know, it's like, hey, like I'm sitting at my desk today and just thought of this, you should make it into a video. And like, no, you should make it into a video. Mm. Because like, if I would have done that to someone else a year ago, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, you know? So at the end of the day, if TikTok wants people to see your stuff, it'll go out to people. If not, you tried, you know? Let's talk about and end on a moment that you uh, texted me a picture of. Oh my God. With (laughs) With the office, it goes hand in hand. You got, tell me about this. You got a t-shirt from Chili's that says, I feel rod in this (laughs) (laughs) chili. That was okay. So I went to Chili's. So I was in the suburbs. You took like Uh, yourself on a date to Chili's. Literally. So my mom was like sick and I was just taking care of her and I was in the suburbs and like what I tweeted. I'm like, what major restaurant chain should I support in the suburbs tonight? Cause there's like no local businesses. My parents live in the suburbs of Chicago. Same. Um, and so then everyone, chili, chili, chili. I'm like, and I, I, I love chili. I was like, hell yeah, I'll go chili. Um, so I went and just documented the whole thing and made a video out of it, which is on my Instagram or TikTok. You can find it. Chili's got a hold of it. And I made a lot of office references in it. Cause obviously it's like their favorite restaurant. And they sent me that. Amazing. Which is amazing. It's, uh, that by far is one of the best things that's happened to me. I'm, I love it. 
I mean, yes, Shania followed you, but more importantly, Chili sent you a custom t-shirt with an office. That, for some reason, I don't know. That, that one hit me harder. I don't, <laughs> sorry, Shania. <laughs> like Shania invited me to a residency. I'm literally going to her residency in Vegas. Oh my gosh, but amazing. Chili sent me a $50 gift card. So I don't know, you know, like. Well, I don't know. <laughs> come see, come saw. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, or maybe I'll go to Chili's on the strip. Just bring it all together. Circle it back. (laughs) Bring it up in the inbox. All hands in. Stand up. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Rod, thank you so much for your time. Lauren. Yeah. And please tell everyone your handles so they can follow you on Instagram and TikTok if they don't already, which they probably do. Yep. So TikTok is at Rod, and then Instagram is at justmeet.rod. Um, before you go, Mm -hmm. I just realized I wanted to ask you this. Do you have Mm -hmm. an all-time favorite like TikTok of your own that you've made? It might be the Chili's one. It honestly <laughs> might be the Chili's one. Just because it was so, that was one, I think what I loved about that one was I'm like, why am I going to post this? It relates to nothing that I do. And it didn't It was so different from you sitting at your desk. Yeah, but that's, I'm like, no, this was fun for me. So I posted it and that's when I'm like, okay, like this was fun and I can post whatever I want. And then whatever is going to go viral goes viral. Like it doesn't have to be every post goes viral. So I think that was why I really liked that one. It was just because it, was it like, kind of helped you realize like they don't, yeah. yeah, it doesn't all have to be a home run. We can get, we can yeah. sports reference. I don't know, get to first base yeah, or whatever yeah. it is. Perfect. Yeah. You're learning corporate and sports. References today, so. <laughs> You've changed me so much. Rod, thank you so yeah. much. And we can't wait to yeah. see your pilot and see you at Shania's yes. residency and hopefully yeah. see you in a Chili's. Yes. And the Chili's of course. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, everybody, thank you, babes, for listening to Chic Shit Only episode three. Thank you, Rod, for being here. I love him. I can't wait for his pilot that he's writing. And um, I also want to thank you guys for sending in your questions. Please send me in more. I love answering those and connecting with you. And you know, it's just my opinion, but take it or leave it. Just my opinion. Just saying. (laughs) My advice, just saying. Um, And I also want to tell you, we will be doing a special second episode this week because, ooh, Bravo fans, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, highly anticipated four-part reunion featuring Andy Cohen grilling, putting her feet to the flame. Miss Erica Jane is starting this week on Bravo. It starts Wednesday and I am such a fan. I can't wait for this. So I, we've got to just dive in because you know I love to review TV. So we are going to have a second episode of Chic Shit Only that will be up on Friday morning, reviewing episode one of The Real Houses of Beverly Hills reunion. So please tune in and please like and follow and share and subscribe and tell your friends about Chic Shit Only and tell me what you think. I love hearing from you, babes. Always, always, always. Thank you so much for listening. Hope this brought a little bright joy to your day. And if not, fuck you. Just saying. I'm just kidding. I would never say that. You guys, I can't. My mom is so... I. I'm not on her level. I'm not on Donna's level. But I'm on your level, I hope, and you're on mine. I love you all so much. Bye!